Do you think it's interesting with the Norway, how long we have Finns and the winters we have and how close to the conditions you will get in the Arctic or in the North Pole? Yeah, I always come back to Finns. Uh, I think it's uh, one of the best uh, platforms you can have. Is you, you take the train up there, you go out to the train station and you're in the middle of it immediately. It's a playground that is close and uh, relevant for me testing equipment. Every day has the, its own routine um, and uh, you ski during the day and when you come to the end of the day you find a nice place to pitch tents and then in the tent into the sleeping bag. Uh, that's, what, that's actually what you look forward to the whole day, that moment of being inside in the cozy warm bag in that safe tent and get your stove going, get a cup of hot chocolate and dinner and a long good sleep and then ready to go again next day. To have a warm enough sleeping bag, that's really one of the most important pieces of equipment you need to have because you are skiing 8-10 hours a day and you do that for maybe two months. So if you don't get enough sleep, you will not be able to ski uh, those distances uh, you need to ski during the day. So good, warm, safe sleep is essential. I always test my equipment, yeah. If it's a new piece of equipment, I have to know that it's going to be work for me on the trip itself. Uh, you're sleeping back with you? Thank you. Ever so since the first trip in 1986, we went up to Ardangavida and tested the equipment up there to know that what we were going to have on the expedition itself was going to work. So testing equipment before it always is essential. Looks good. Yeah, we had some blue sky. Let's go. By the end of the day, sometimes when I am shivering, I'm cold, and I'm thirsty and, and hungry, I know that I'm going to pitch my tent and be comfortable inside. And so that's a good motivation, you know, to push it forward. When, when you can rely on the equipment that you use, and you know that you can, you know, be in a storm and it's going to be tough weather, but uh, you're going to enjoy it. I've been in a few storms. Uh, and if I had time to prepare the tent, I know the tent is secured, then I don't worry. Then I know that uh, I can hold out the storm. Like the outside is hard and tough, and sometimes it's even miserable, but in the inside it's so cozy and warm. When you can uh, sit inside a safe, warm tent and have that storm raging outside, that uh, really, then you feel lucky and you feel close to life in a way. Uh, yeah, to me there's nothing better than eating chocolate inside the warmth of a sleeping bag and hearing the wind just <laughs> crazy outside. A few, uh, few millimeters of fabric between two worlds. Yeah. Well, it's good to be here finally, enjoying the warmth of the sleeping bag. How's your new bag? Huh? How's your new bag? That's good. I'm gonna have a look at it. Wow, we got arms. I'm so detailed here. Yeah? I just woke up this morning and have these two arms. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's handy for making breakfast. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to go all the way out of the bag. You can just uh, mm -hmm. zip it up and uh, take your arms out. Yeah, and when you want to zip it, zip this one, the, the fiber layer. Yeah, it's okay. like central zipper, so it's really easy access. Yeah, and the zip right is here. in the front. Yeah. So the inner bag is, is down and the outer is fiber. Yeah, that's where okay. it is. This is like a good combination. Yeah, totally. And it keeps you warm around the shoulders and your back. Mm -hmm. There's nice. some good space in the bags. I can like sometimes even nearly stretch 
Like yeah. my, my the deep Svalbard deep. and Spitsbergen bags, for, they, they work really, really well for me. And they have really the right fit for me. I'm able to move. There's enough space inside. I'm able to move around there and uh, change my clothing inside the bag if I need to. So the, the, those bags really have a good fit for me. I usually choose a, f a combination fiber down bag when I started the trip uh, nearby the ocean because there's a lot of moisture and then I go for a down bag uh, if I know I'm going to be on a terrain that is mainly dry away from maritime weather. When it's minus 50 or f below 50 it's really really difficult. It's really really difficult and uh, uh, that's uh, that's really when you need a good warm bag. When is that temperature is twice as cold as the freezer you have back home. Uh, you're going to sleep in those temperatures, you're going to ski in those temperatures. It's really, really on the limit. But it's possible. Good. You ever get? I, I actually think we should stay in. Okay, it's too strong. Ah, uh, it's no point. I'll film, so you, you should come out and see for yourself, you know, to get some fresh air. Yeah, okay. But it looks uh, not okay, very nice. The good thing working with Hesport is that they listen to the users. They listen to the, the feedback that we, who are in the field, uh, provide and, and, uh, and our uh, over inputs uh, and they're valued with Hellsport and that's also one the reason why they make such good products I think because they know and listen to the guys that's out there and testing it what's work and what doesn't work and what they should change. So if it works for you I think it will work for many other people? If it works for me it should work for everyone. Det var et perfekt studio.